Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 67 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where today I'm bouncing out of my mecha suit because it's oh so fun. This isn't even how powerful it can be. It's just it's just too fun to play with. Uh, but between episodes, I did a little digging underground here so I could have a nice little cable system. Very fancy, very cool. You should all be impressed with my cable work here. Very undirewire-ish. Very nice and neat. Look at how good I did. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna just do a few things here. Actually, I already got my export bus, so you're cool. So I'd like you to export fluorite dust, please. Now I might need to get a crafter card for that guy because I'm pretty sure fluorite dust needs to be crafted. So I'm just automating fully today the process of polonium and or plutonium. Uh, so that should kick you into gear, and we should see this fluorite dust improve. The only thing I might need to do is an items mode input from the front. And now you're happy. Boom. That's cool. All right. And that should be processing faster than, or, you know, filling faster than it needs to. So I don't think we need to throw speed or stack upgrades in there. But maybe at some point we will. I don't know. We'll find out. Um... So last episode, we talked about the need for a solar neutron activator to turn you know, this into polonium, which we've been doing. And counteractively, we may or may not want to set up some kind of uh, ultimate pressurized tube here for this guy, the isotopic centrifuge. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying with these big words. And the isotopic centrifuge may or may not accept input from the bottom. I guess we'll find out. Um, he might need to, what I might do is, okay, yeah, cool beans, but let's do wrench mode. There you go. He may be inputting, so there is a side config. All right, cool. So we can gases in the bottom. That's cool. That's cool. So we can totally gases in the bottom. Nice. Now, how did I do this over here? We did something in the side as well. So we could do gases in the bottom. What do you guys got going on? Okay, yeah, I remember now. You're the output of this thing, right? So we're probably gonna wanna do something similar. Like I wanna kinda match what you got going on here. And your output will be the output of, so let's see, with uh, with, 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 with this stuff, right? Um, spent nuclear waste, nuclear waste. With this stuff, when we turn it into plutonium we are also going to get spent nuclear waste right so the plutonium will turn into plutonium pellets again fluoride dust required and you're going to also get spent nuclear waste so we're going to want everything to kind of connect up here so let's pay some good attention to what we're doing at the moment and remember nuclear waste bad so be careful right but this is the nuclear waste line from our reactor right so if i pipe that up to there Okay, and you're set to normal mode and you're set to inverted mode, right? That means redstone signal on is this runs, redstone signal off is this runs, right? Now where you get, you don't need power, that's right. Okay, I remember now. So you may need a little bit of power help. We're gonna have to figure out how that's gonna go. So, and then you're gonna output your gas. in the back yes i'm assuming that's a gas right i don't need you nowheres but yes output back blue you should be ultimate pressurized tube a gas yeah we'll see well let's kick this guy on real quick so you should be filling up with nuclear waste and off and then if I invert your signal here, boop, you'll start processing said nuclear waste into plutonium. Sweet. Um, and you're gonna definitely need some kind of power, so we're gonna figure that out real fast. Because there's many sides to this block that we need to interface with. And unlike this guy, he actually needs power. This guy's solar power based. This guy definitely needs to be connected to power. Cool. So now nuclear waste turning into plutonium. Why you no output out back? Is plutonium a liquid? I wouldn't think so. I mean, we can check. New. No. Yeah, because he doesn't even have a side config for liquids, right? He's only gases. You know what it might be? It might be because I rotated him. So maybe, maybe this is the front. That might be what it is. I did rotate him, so this may be the front. So let's check gas's side config output front. 
That seems to be accurate because now there's no more plutonium. Cool. All right, so then you're making plutonium, which is going to go into a pressurized reaction chamber, right? Pressurized reaction chamber. Which needs an enrichment chamber. One of these days I'll just be smart and say, let's make let's make let's make all this stuff happen, but eh, it's all good. So then you can pop down, right? Your plutonium, so gases, that's fine. You can uh yeah, output out the right. That's probably the right direction, right? Because I want the spent nuclear waste to go out the right side here, and that'll eventually connect up to this line for the purposes of going all the way over to pew into my ocean. Cool. All right, so nuclear waste comes in, plutonium comes out, plutonium processes with what? Uh, water again? Yes, so we're gonna want another ender tank. Now my ender tank's kinda low because all my water is turning into, at the moment at least, um, sodium, but that's, or lithium, but that's almost done, to be honest with you. That's almost 100% done. Uh, so at some point it'll back stuff and won't be a problem. But I'm thinking the way this works, I may be able to fluid, make sure, yeah, input on the top, cool. Yeah, no, he's just very empty. Let's go check in on our lithium friends. Because these guys should be back stuffed, back stuffed, back stuffed, and yeah, he's actually very close to back stuffed. So in like a minute or two here, I might wind up because ultimate mechanical pipes do what 512 buckets that's not that bad it's not that bad it should only take a minute to fill up that pipe buffer and then this guy will be nice and full so that should be fine and it's also possible by the way that i don't have chunk loading really going on here i should probably at least chunk load these four so that when i'm not here this keeps running cool and now this guy will fill up and then once the pipe fills up the tank will fill and then we're good and back stuffed right because i've already got 2048 lithium here right so this drawer filled up this thing filled up which filled up the tests you can see i replaced these with lower tier pipes because i didn't want them to store as much lithium uh and then these guys and then this guy and then this guy all back stuffed and then water should be happening here now boom nice cool 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 all right so you also need to export bus fluorite so let's get our export bus or exporter and crafting. And I've got some cable here. Dire wire like you've never seen before. All right, exporter, good. Crafter, good. Let's make sure side config for items is input on the front. That looks cool. Let's get a little bit of fluorite dust there. Dump you in here. Make sure crafting card is good and you should be groovy. Nice, nice. All right, so with that set, now this toggles on and off the isotropic centrifuge or this guy, right? So check it out. If we activate you at the moment, Right? What we'll see happening is nuclear waste coming in here and getting processed into plutonium. Now, I mean, you might need some upgrades, right? But this guy's filling up and nothing's processing, right? So let's get some upgrades from mechanism. Boom and boom. And let's be prepared for the future when we're definitely going to need more mechanism upgrades at some point. Cool. So now you are clearing nuclear waste faster than you're producing it, obviously, right? This guy's just gonna back stuff, and now all the nuclear waste we've got coming in here is turning into plutonium, right? Just straight up. And then we're also going to need, I told you we'd need another one of these sooner than you could think. Um, we're gonna want you and you. Cool, nice. And you don't have any power, which makes some semblance of sense. Ugh, you're just a mess, ain't you? Maybe I should do power in the front and the exporter on the bottom. Would that make sense? I feel like it could. So what we could have here... Is you... With you... And you... And you. Cool? And then you should be going up? Yes, perfect. 
Cool. And then we can tap into our universal cable. Boom. And now you're getting power and you're doing the spent nuclear waste thing. And then we can turn this off. Scram. Because we need to deal with spent nuclear waste sooner than later. But yeah, you guys are all behaving nicely, which is cool. And there's your plutonium pellets. Nice. And if we wanted to, we could totally import bust those. If I could just find another side to this machine that's not already in use, which I don't think I can. So maybe I can't import bust those. We'll figure something out. <laughs> we'll figure something out. Yeah, there's a lot of sides to these machines that are in use right now. There's literally just sides everywhere. Items going in, water going in, everything. Everything's happening all at once. It's bad news. All right, so let's not connect our pressurized tubes just yet. Because we want to be very careful. Very careful to not accidentally do anything here, right? So ultimate pressurized tube, because the last thing we want to do is a nuclear accident again, though to be fair, radiation should protect me as long as things ain't blowing up. Yeah, my radiation suit didn't protect me because of explosions. Right, so now your sidedness for gases will be output out the right eject on. So as soon as I connect this guy, he should dump this tank. Perfect. And that's what I'd like to see. So a little plutonium still in here, a little radioactive. Plutonium pellets are yes. <sighs> nice. So the only other thing I want to do is how can I get the items out of these things that I want to get out? There's a couple options, right? Um, right, because all the sides really are kind of in use. Um, at the moment, only because these two are next to each other. I mean, technically, I could have separated them a little bit, but I'd like to have a way to get these apart from each other, and I think we have a way to handle that. So the entangled mod can be bound to other blocks. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. I like the sound of that. Let's make one of these. So I'm pretty sure what I can do here, what I'm, I'm pretty sure I can do if I wanted to, And I don't know what the range limit on this is, or if there is one, but entangled binder can bind entangled blocks to other blocks. So what if I entangled you to you? I don't know how that works. Block bound. Oh, hey, cool. And it renders the block inside there. How neat is that? That is awesome sauce. And now we had a cable and we had an importer. And I'm assuming the sidedness matters. But we'll figure that out in a minute. Because I don't know what side. This would be the right side? I don't know. Uh, so for items, you know, obviously import is front. Let's make just blue everywhere else. Right? So now you've got plutonium pellets there. I like the little rendering of the block inside. That is neat. That is neat. And then we could import a U like so. And if I'm not mistaken, boom, plutonium pellets going inside. Ha ha! Aha! How cool is that? I like that. Good job, Entangled Mod. You work really well. I'm very pleased with you. Right? That's pretty cool. So now we're going to select you and right click on you to bind you. And then we'll make sure that the sidedness of items is output on top. Cool. And then we will have another importer. Fair. And if we wanted to, we could super duper entangle every other aspect of this block. So what this does, um, for, for those of you who may not be aware, um, but it's pretty self-explanatory if you're paying it, you know, if you have an idea of what I just did, but it basically links one tile entity to this block. So literally whatever block you bind this to, it's going to pretend like it's that block. So if you pull items out of this, you're pulling them out of this. If you pipe items in, you're piping items in. If you're putting energy in, you're putting energy in. So we could literally do whatever we want with this to make more neat structures. Um, and that's really nice. Like that is super cool right there. That is a very straightforward, like that's that's a block that's existed in mods for I don't even know how long. Um, it's just it's just always been around. Um, I want to say Vasky, when he created a Thomcraft add-on, was the first person to do something like this. But I might be mistaken. Um, but yeah, super cool. Uh, nice way to access more 
than one side of a block. That's the problem, right? Is blocks only have six sides. So when you do something like, like this that requires, like think about how many things are going in here. Water in, polonium in, items in, items out, bad stuff out, and power. We literally need all six sides to interact with this block. So if we have one of these sides used up by another block just because we want to, it becomes a problem. And that's not good, right? So let's turn this guy back on. So we're going to activate you again. So you should literally now be creating all the plutonium that I want. So just by having the reactor on, the plutonium is going to build up and then it's going to boop and make another plutonium pellet. How great is that? I love it. I love it. Um, and I'm going to get another speed and energy upgrade here just because I can, because I don't think I ever inserted them into this dude. Sweet. Now, if I decide that I no longer want plutonium, and that I instead want polonium, what we do is flip this lever, right? And what'll happen is the nuclear waste over here, see how nothing's happening on this side of the blocks? And this guy's emptying, right? If I flip the lever, whoop, now all of a sudden this nuclear waste will fill up. This one will, we're getting about 25 to 30 millibuckets per tick, but so it's splitting the nuclear waste between plutonium and polonium, right? So it's being split. I don't want it to split. I want to control which one of these is running at all times. So suddenly, boom, you are going to be at 50 millibuckets per tick, and this guy is producing polonium rather rapidly. How cool is that? How cool is that? Now, this guy, we may wind up wanting a redstone control on. So what I might do, what I might do, I might move this ultimate pressurized tube to that guy right there. Because he's tapping into that. Yeah, we want to be careful about this. But this should be the output. And right now he's the input. So I don't like that at the moment. I do not like that at the moment. So what I should do, I should rotate him maybe. Because I'm assuming he has a sidedness to him that we care about. So let's turn off our reactor before we blow something up. And let's... I'm assuming it's going to be safe to break that entangled block down there, but I'm going to break him and I'm going to set him like this. And let's just check the sidedness of gases here, right? So for gases, it's input back, no input back and bottom. So I want to get rid of bottom output on the left, output on the left. Right? So what if we tried to make it on the right? So right is empty, right? So theoretically, oh, you know what it is? This thing does have sidedness to him. Actually, I can't quite tell. He has some form of sidedness for sure. Uh, oh, you know what it is? I know what it is, because he's not linked, right? So shift right click binds you to that. Click that, okay, cool. So now are you connected? You are connected. So that's a little bit of a bummer. So what if I went to the side config here for gases? And we turned you off, right? So now your input is only on the back. Meh. Um, for gases. So you know what it is? It may be that the sidedness matches the block that it's connected to. That I could see being a thing. That I could see being a thing. So let's remove you. Okay. We're going to... Turn off the gases connection here, boop. We're gonna turn off the output on the top, boop. Okay, uh, well, we might leave the output on the top. So if I put you here and we bind you, so see how the gas is not connecting? There's no connection there. Now, if I go to you and say gases, turn you on for a sec. So you should have a little bit of, no, you don't yet, but yeah, I need a little bit longer in a sec. There you go, that should be enough. Scram, right? So spent nuclear waste, one. So if I now bind you and set you to output on the bottom for gases, he didn't connect. I was hoping he would. I have to rebind him and then he did connect. Side config, gases, output on bottom, eject on. You should be ejecting. Now are you happy? Yes. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So 
So let's put you on wrench mode. All right, so that means that you're outputting out that. Okay, cool. And then what I'm gonna do is side config items can still be output on top so that we can import bus here, right? So you've got a polonium pellet, I do that. And now you're groovy, right? Nice, polonium, fluorite, awesome. Because I'm also going to want this to have a redstone signal. And the reason why is that antimatter is made with polonium, right? So at some point, we're gonna to wanna to produce polonium and rather than turning it into polonium pellets, we're gonna to wanna to send it to our antimatter machine. So we're going to need to route this piping to an antimatter machine that'll probably be over here somewhere. And then I can turn you off with a redstone signal, right? So right now I'll make redstone normal, meaning you require redstone to run. And if I activate you, you're cool and you're you know doing your thing. Why you know spend nuclear wasting? What's happening? Scram. All right, because it's nighttime. <laughs> Dyer knows what's going on, I promise. Hey, I lose track. I forget that that machine requires sunlight. It's not my fault. Right, so now you're good. Yes, cool. So polonium, so without a redstone signal, polonium's not turning into pellets, right? With a redstone signal, suddenly it will. And the pellets get eaten by the refined storage system. That is cool beans. That is cool beans. And if we want to cut down on a little bit of this dire wire, we totally can. Um, like we could totally have an exporter for the lithium down on the, in the underground too. Right, because why not? Normally I'd be far less concerned about messing with these kind of machines, but like, let's not forget nuclear disasters occur if I break something the wrong way. So let's be a little bit careful, but this should be no problem, right? Along with a crafting card. Boom, I call that a win, right? Scram. And maybe we want to uh, tidy this up, right? Because it's a little bit messy. So what we're gonna want is another entangled block. Cool. What if I just put you here? We bind you to this. We steal you, we steal you, okay, let's just do something to validate, so flip lever, all right, you guys are probably running low on power now, yes, out of power, pop you down, you should now be happy with power, good, and you are also full on power means that you received power to process the plutonium we just got, right? So you should be getting all your stuff. You're gonna fill up with a buffer. You're gonna, you know, convert all to plutonium. I like this system, I really do. Entangled is a nice mod. Holy cow, is that a cool mod? I really, really do appreciate it. It is great. I should play more with this, because this is cool. Whoop, and all the power comes in, nice. All right, scram, reactor off, and everybody's a winner. Speaking of things that are back stuffing, 4,000 oak logs. I think it's safe to assume that my tree farm is doing a good job back at my base. What? What even? Y'all, I just, I just can't. Yeah, look, totally working. Look at it go. 4,000 oak logs later, I think it's safe to say we finally made a successful tree farm that was cool and interesting and not a single magic block. Yay! Whew. All right, so we've got all this working beautifully. We now get to control whether we're doing polonium or plutonium. I think that's neat. Um, you know, what we could do is have a sign here, right? So with you off, do we have a mod that lets me edit signs? I guess not. Right, so with the redstone signal off, we're processing Plutonium, right? So that means plutonium, polonium, right? Boop, now polonium. Sweet, loving it. Scram! Look, it's not my, I don't make the rules. It's a rule that when you click the button, you have to say scram. 
it's, you know, I can't help it. It's just, you know, if you don't say it, it'll explode. Got to say it every time. Bad news if you don't, trust me. All right, so now what we should do is take all this lovely polonium and plutonium and discover what an SMS thingy or S super fade the thingy, dude. SPS casing. Uh, does it show me anywhere how to do the super block, the multi block, or do I have to go Google that? I think I have to go Google that. Mechanism SPS. Super critical phase shifter. So does it tell me on here how much of what, et cetera? Uh, not really. All right, if my math is correct, I think we need about 48 SPS casings and about eight ports. And a port needs four casings each, right? So 48, and then we need eight, so we need 32. Wow, that's expensive. So 32 and 48, that's what I think the math comes out to, right? So let's first teach you how to SPS casing. Okay. And we're also gonna need some reactor glass, but we'll talk about that in a minute, right? So if we look at SPS, I wanna say we need about 48. I think that's the, the math that I followed. There's a couple guides online and I think I'm following this correctly. So we definitely need more, a lot more, polonium and plutonium. So what I might do, um, yeah, we're gonna need a lot more. It's basically what it boils down to. Um, so you know what would be cool? Let's make our big energy storage device real quick so that we can run our reactor and actually get power from it. Because I've been kind of using a trash can for this whole time and the plan is to do this the proper way, right? Um, and then we also need to look at, you know, nuclear fuel and whatnot. Um, so, you know, uranium, we're kind of kind of out of that stuff. So we're gonna have to figure out a solution there. You know, I'm not looking forward to figuring out how to solve that problem. Uh, there's a few things we could do, obviously, but I'd like to do something fun if we can. But we'll get there. We'll get there. So for our um, for our multi-block, let's do a 3x3x3 three by three by three internal. Does that sound fair? So that would be a 5x5x5 five by five by five external um, uh, of this thing, right? Induction casing. So if we want that, it's going to be 50 and then 12. Yeah, 62. I think that's right for the casings. Yeah, we can do that. Sweet. Uh, where do I want to put that bad boy? In my basement, maybe? In my sub basement? Mm -hmm. So the way this works is it's a big multi block cube, and you place as many of these things in there as you want, and the more you put in, the better. Um, and there's two kinds of things we can put in there. So first of all, let's get a couple induction ports going, right? Uh, so that's gonna be important. So there's two things here. There are induction cells, which basically determine how much energy they can store. So for example, if you place one basic induction cell in the multi-block, you can store 3.2 billion RF. If you place two of them in there, you can store 6.4 billion RF, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but you can use these to store 25 billion up to 204 billion or 1.6 trillion RF each. So in other words, these things can hold a lot of power provided you, you know, build up a lot of them. And then there's the providers. These determine how much RF can come in and out of the multi-block at a time. So if you place one ultimate induction provider in there, you're allowed to import or extract 52 million RF per tick, right? If you put two in there, it's 104 million, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna build a three by three internal, which means it has room for nine, no, it has three by three by three internal, so it has room for 27 of these bad boys. You don't have to fill it. So I'll start by putting a couple in there, we'll see how things go, and then we'll probably expand it. That sound cool? So let's get one or two, let's do two ultimate induction cells. Can I do that? Wow, we need a lot of golden redstone for that. Whew. Yeah, we might be uh, we might be doing a resource production episode before we get into this, I feel like is the, uh, is the thing that we're about to say. Cause I'd really like to use the ultimates, right? But even one of them is just like a stupid amount of redstone and gold. So this is the part where 
mechanism very quickly says, why don't you have a digital miner yet, Direwolf, right? Like mechanism very much says, hey, you should be using this digital miner I gave you. It makes mining great. And it really does. But Dyer's trying to avoid using it because it's so easy. It's just place down block and get magic. Um, so as much as I love the block and I've used it many times, I'm also in the series trying to do things I don't normally do. So I'd like to look at doing another approach. Now, there's a couple ways we could do this. Um, there's a couple ways we could go for, for, for resource generation. I'd really like to go bonkers on it. Right? We did our big frame machine, which was cool, but it's unfortunately a little bit slow. Slower than I would like it to be. And also I can't chunk load it, which is really the pain. Right, The, the biggest pain of it is I can't chunk load it. That is just brutal. So we're going to have to figure something out. Um, I'd like to eventually have multiple ways of bringing resources in. Uh, I might try... There's only one other time I've done this. The astral approach of turning smooth stone into ores that might be cool uh and astral just i remember that being like ridiculous and i'm hoping that it's still ridiculous and it could be a lot of fun to build and also way more interesting than you know a simple block so how about we wrap up this episode here we'll come back next episode we will look into resource production so we're going to put this whole setup on hold we're going to look into producing lots and lots of resources like redstone and gold and all the other junk we need. Now, we do also have environmental tech, but uh, I'm going to hold off on that a little bit because that takes a while to get into. Um, but maybe at some point we'll have environmental tech running as well. But we'll come back next episode. We'll look into astral as an approach to generating lots of resources. Does that sound like a plan? I hope so, because I think we could have some fun with that. All right, for now, Double Toy signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We will come back next time and play with Astral to produce resources. I think that's definitely what we have to do. All right, guys, for now, take it easy.